Hello, legends. Hello. Oh, it's slippery loud. There we go. Hello, legends, and thank you so much for being patient. Welcome. Welcome to season three, episode one. We are back and we are live. Um, let's start off by saying hello to all these amazing legends here and to say hello to you in the chat. Uh, I'm doing the TD thing again, so please let me know if I need to fix something. But let's say hello, starting with Sydney. Sydney, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hi, my name is Sydney. I play Alona, the half elf cloistered cleric, and our pronouns are she, her. Excellent. It's been so long. And it's been a long time. It's been like, what, like a month and a half, maybe? Like, it feels like forever, but it yeah. Does. Yeah. Well, next up, we have Kylie. Kylie, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hello, I'm Kylie, or I go by Kai. It really doesn't matter at this point. I play Shionibus, the Elven Ranger, and we both go by she, her. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Excellent. One second. There we go. Don't know how that happened. Uh, next up, we have Sam. Sam, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hello, I'm Sam. I play Ichiko Tompapapui, also known as La Pacifica Dorita. I had to get the muscle memory back. <laughs> <laughs> and our pronouns are she, her. It's good to see everybody. Missed y'all. And I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday night. Yeah. Next up, we have Wes. Wes, please tell us who you are and who you're playing and what your pronouns are. Hi, everybody. I'm Wes. I'm playing Dragon Targir, the Duskwalker Magnus. The Fireball Boy, and we're both he, him. I love that nickname, the Fireball Boy. Fireball Boy. He is That's a boy. He's a young, young lad. He's a young lad. Name of my new band, the Fireball Boys. <laughs> Flame Lad. <laughs> Flame Lad. <laughs> like you just one. call Dragon Gay. Perfect for Pride Month. For Pride. Oh, do I still have my Perfect fan? For Pride Month. <laughs> I'll have to go find it at the. Where's our Rainbow fans? Weren't we all supposed to get Rainbow fans? Oh. Uh, season two. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Well, next up, we have Randy. Oh, you got an awesome waifu pillow. Uh, but Randy, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Howdy, howdy. Uh, I'm Randy Alvarenga. I'm, um, our, my name is Randy Alvarenga. I play Lothir uh, Samuelson. I almost said Targear. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one our, day. Our human <laughs> druid. You can dream. Uh, <laughs> our human druid. Our pronouns are he, him. <laughs> oh, that's, a little, uh, that's a little spicy for, for Pride Month. <laughs> gotta gotta so. fill it in there. Also, what was that waifu pillow? Was that you, Wes? Yes, it's yeah. absolutely Wes. So you're yeah. telling me I know two people with a waifu pillow it's themselves? Not a, it's not a waifu pillow. It's it's like the cuddle pillow or the like happiness pillow. Oh, okay. So it's like group hug it was the group hug pillow the group that's, hug pillow. that's nice but if i had a nickel for everyone i knew with a pillow of themselves i'd have two nickels which is a lot <laughs> the other person has also appeared on the stream it's true <laughs> one tobias raffaelis oh he's even doing the little hearts i i zoom is blurring it out <laughs> <laughs> zoom, zoom is saying it's too hot for for twitch content all right well that being said my name is pj i am the gm uh, for Edge of Legend here on Nat20 Productions, official on Twitch. Uh, my pronouns are he, and I'll be playing uh, every other character. Uh, a quick recap, if you haven't seen the amazing recap that Cindy did for Season 2, the big bad fight happened, and it was it was really a lot of emotions. Uh, staring down the barrel of fighting a corrupted god, and they were able to redeem said God, and uh, kind of caused a massive amount of healing and a monument that exists in Dragon's Grave to this day. So they were able to basically talk down the big bad evil guy. Amazing moment. Go check it out on YouTube. The season two was all about breaking cycles and generational trauma and, and all that. And now we start off with season three. That being said, it has been... About six, six and a half months since that time in Dragon's Grave. Everyone has gone their separate ways, as they've stated previously. Uh, and along this path, we see them now in different places. Starting with 
Sydney. Sydney, where is Alona right now? Right now? Mm-hmm. Um, I guess that depends on how well her research has been going. Um, I imagine right now she's probably with Zara Lior and the Reliquary. Good. Give me a perception check. Yes. You are exactly where I hope you'd be. Yes. Good. Thank you, Modern Artifice Dice, for giving me the best rolls. I rolled this earlier and I got a nat 20, so I'm hoping that's the energy I'm getting for the entire rest of the night. Uh, what was the roll again? Perception. Perception. Ha ha. <laughs> I missed Pathfinder numbers so much. That's a 36. <laughs> that's so good. All right. So uh Zara Lior hears a knock at the door all the way in the reliquary uh and decides to go investigate who could be there while they are gone you're looking around a bookshelf that you could have sworn in the reliquary that you have combed over a million times until you finally see in between the books something hidden a metal box behind the books on this bookshelf in the reliquary books that are already by definition dangerous oh um in that case if they are gone elona will do her best to tiptoe the slightest the slightest over to this box and um just like wiggle her arm through and just kind of scoot it forward taps it a little bit to see if it shocks her or something doesn't it doesn't you. it doesn't it doesn't i don't i'm not thrown into like immense pain because i touch something no we're good okay she scoots it forward and just kind of takes it and maybe dusts it off a little bit does it look like it hasn't been touched in a while the the metal box looks like it has not been touched in a long time in fact it also looks like it's been locked with it's basically like a almost like one of those boxes you'd get at the bank the metal boxes you get at the bank if that makes any sense like a mm-hmm. little metal box with a lock on it seems it seems very heavy like maybe about five to 15 pounds in the hands interesting um but alone is such a good girl she would never open a box that's locked would she she's changed she's gonna try and open the box <laughs> all right um I'm going to say because Lior has been gone for quite a while that you can eventually figure a way out. How do you open this lock? Um, well, my thievery is not good. Um, so I'm going to see if maybe... No, that's going to... That's, that's a Dragon move. I'm like, what if I throw it on the ground? That's absolutely not. Um... Can I just use an Arcana check to figure out if there's like a magic spell I would know that helps that would help open this box? Well, you're a divine caster. You can give me a religion check. <gasps> yes. Good. <laughs> yes. My favorite. Oh no. Less good. Um, less good, but not the worst, because my modifier for religion is still a twenty-two. So that's a twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. All right. So uh, you know that any of your spells, because this is a mundane lock. Ironic oh. that there's not more security on this, but it's a mundane lock. So literally any one of your spells, including your cantrips, that can blow up a, a, a mundane lock will mm-hmm. annihilate this thing. Oh, great. Well, then I'm going to use Divine Lance. Okay. Uh, I'm going to assume you just kind of shoot the blast at the lock. Yes, I'm going to try and make it as small as I can. Like when Izuku Midoriya just does like the tiny little thing with his like fingers. I've been watching, I've been watching My Hero Academia a lot more recently. Um, so I'm going to try and shoot it through my finger and try and pop it open. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say that's it works. You can see this kind of like smoke billowing out of it. And then suddenly you hear a snap as all the tumblers heat up and break. And the lock itself, it sounds like a small amount of melting. Only a small. Well, that's good. What's in the box? As you open up the metal box, you see in there a book. A book about uh, 10 inches tall by 8 inches long or wide. Very thick. It is made out of a stone slate reinforced by animal hide. And in writing on the cover, 
in horrible, bloody scratches, you see the gospel of Riala. Oh! You're starting off strong, huh, PJ? Huh? Season three? Holy... Do I have to do a sanity roll or something because I read the name? You give me a willpower. I'm sorry. Give me a will save with a plus four because you've already uh, encountered Gorholgus in a, a little moment. You know, in a moment that happened. That's true. Oh, yes. I rolled a 19 on the die face. Oh. Um, and my willpower is a plus 23 and I can't do math. So I'm still going to use my calculator. And that's a 42. 42. So as you look at this, you notice that the pages are actually old stone tablets, uh, scratched and engraved with layers of animal hide ripped over the the edges and strapped down with with, uh, uh, cords at this point should be long, dilapidated. And you are uh, beholden to this book. You see it, and it begins to read about the wisdom of his madness. And it continues to go on and on about, you, you see an image of a, of a dwarf at a forge with a large hammer and a small burning orb on the forge, and he's slamming it. Now, the reading, you can't quite tell what the reading is, probably because your brain is trying with all of its might to protect you from the wisdom of madness. But you're seeing a dwarf with a hammer and a forge with this ball of fire slamming it down. And you see inside the ball, nine tentacles in a smiling face. Meanwhile, flipping it, you see uh, the gods depicted in old, old pictographs. And there meeting them is the full moon with a smile on his face. You are seeing, as you turn again, three heads in the sky, watching as three people kill each other one with a face dripping of ink and a body of tentacles one a dragon holding a man in his hand like a sword and in the center you see a devilish figure with one eye that's the problem when your brain tries to make you forget things you forget how bad your security is for the things that no one should see oh stream might be frozen oh is it? Oh no. Let's it see. It is. Oh. Huh. Oh, That's looks like odd. we're back. It's still it's still working for me. Yeah, yeah it's moving okay. for me. Oh. It was for a hot minute. Did anybody miss anything? Yeah, chat, please let us know what uh what y'all missed so we can help you out. Let's see read, read in the chat, explaining to the prelate who's blasting spells in the reliquary. Did stream freeze or anyone else? Yup. Hmm. So weird. Yeah. Oh, it's like back for I that? exited and got back in, and I'm fine now. Yeah. Well, Weird. Well, the means... recap is you didn't get mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not crazy. Um, okay. Well, that uh, that happened. Um, what happens if, obviously, I'm touching it. What happens if I just sneak it into my bag? Seems to be a book like any other book you've ever held in your bag. Okay. Um, I will go ahead <laughs> and take this cursed book of the Elder God of Madness, and I will put it in my bag, and I will pretend like I forget that it's there and move on like nothing has happened. In the meantime, I'm going to write a note. Um... I'm gonna write a note to myself and I'm gonna put it over the the container that reads do not open. Was it Under like, any circumstances, like do not open. Don't dead open inside. Is like that what you write on the thing? Yes, exactly. Hey, Just PJ, in case Yeah. Can you turn what? the volume up a little bit. Sure. It's a little hard to hear. Sure, sure, sure. How about because now, yeah. I, I'm asking for chat. Chat was the one who brought it up. Okay. Also, hi, live from the apocalypse. Thank yeah. you for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for the right live oh, from the apocalypse. Yeah. We're just getting started yeah. off with a bang. Uh, let us know also if uh, you will find no honor here. 
Love that. Let us know if the audio is better now. Do no do an open. Remain closed always. That's what Alone is gonna write on it. Thank you, Mind Criminal. Um uh with like a skull and crossbones on the post-it note. Um just in case anyone finds um her bag of holding slash if anyone else fumbles in there for anything i really don't want them to touch this um you, you put a sign on it that specifically dragon will ignore if he finds that somehow you know how this. about i change the note to be very boring elona's um you know what i'll just put elona's taxes underwear. taxes <laughs> Alona's taxes. Alona's Honestly, taxes. good idea. <laughs> Look, no, I, all I'm saying is that would work a hundred percent. He would be like, "Oh God, why?" Don't Alona's open taxes. spreadsheets inside. Don't open spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. It's just spreadsheets. <laughs> Nothing else. Uh, okay. That being said, so we're gonna move from Alona, who found this book, and we're gonna go over to Sam. Sam, where is Ichi right now? Um, Ichi is, uh. She has rented out a little office and it's all done up like a uh, old timey detective PI office um, where she has people bring her leads on um, the co anti coffee cult. Uh, and she's going through her paperwork right now. Okay. Okay. So uh, as you do that, give me a. What would be a good check for this? Give me uh, your choice of any charisma-based check. Okay. Let's see. Charisma-based diplomacy, perhaps? Well, that would be perfect, actually, yeah. It hit. The dice hit something on my desk, and it abbreviated its roll, and that's why I rolled a four on the die face. Uh, I have a sixteen in diplomacy, which makes it a twenty. But uh... okay, twenty. Um, all right. Well, first of all, hello to uh, Tithalonos. Ty, Ty, uh, Ty, I think I'm probably butchering that. Thank you so much for the raid. You're just in time for the first episode of season three. Uh, you already missed some crazy stuff, but we're gonna get into it with this one. So, with a diplomacy check of twenty. Um, Sam, one of your uh, informants comes back, and they're looking a little, uh, like, a little shaken up. And they're like, um, yeah, hi, uh, um, Ichi, I found her. I found the leader. I found the leader of the NCC. Yeah. You found her? I found her. Yeah. Just, she's, just found her? Yeah, she's, she's coming to Adelphon. Um, she's stopping uh, in, in nearby before she goes to the Adelphon Prime Summit to uh, create a whole new organization that will make sure not only that coffee becomes illegal, but, 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 but alcohol becomes illegal and sugar what? becomes illegal. Everything's going to become illegal. And she already has Senator backing. What? Yeah. Uh, um, um, they, uh, her, name, her name is Madam um, Dolly Taunton. Dolly Taunton, but but no matter where I looked that up, uh, aside from college transcripts, there's nothing there's nothing before that. What? Yeah. This is this is okay okay. Uh, uh, sit down, sit down for a second. You're you're out of breath. You're you're panicking. You're panicking. I'm panicking. I'm not panicking. You're panicking. Okay. Um, and she'll open up her like get a big thing of keys and flip through all the keys and pick one out and go to her filing cabinet. And at the bottom, she'll open up like a series of padlocks and bring out a French press um, and the coffee making equipment. And she'll sit there and make her and her informant a cup of coffee <laughs> and hand it over and say, <sighs> okay. Oh, it's been so long since I've had coffee. My brain feels so much better. What are we gonna do? What am I gonna do? You've done your job. Here's your money. And she'll hand over some coin, and say, this could be dangerous. And frankly, I don't even remember your name. So you should probably just take this and go. You've done good. He extends a hand and goes, thank you. Thank you so much. Takes the money and runs. <sighs> she 
she'll sit there sipping her coffee and start preparing the paperwork to uh, run this lead down. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure enough, everything you say, uh, everything that he, uh, the, the person said seems true. There is a summit meeting in Alphon Prime at some point in the near future. Uh, a Madame uh, Dolly Tontine is looking to bring the NCC and then upgrade it to uh, the, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember the acronym. I think she's looking to upgrade it to another organization. I'll tell you later. Um, but she needs the uh, summit hearing uh, committee to back her up on this. Um, and as the person leaves, they come back and they go, oh, you're, you're Ichi, right? I am. My name is but a whisper in the dark. Right. What we do here is cloaked in shadow. It should never be spoken of. But yeah, I, yeah, that's my name. Um, cause this, this came in the mail for you. Oh. Yeah, there was, there was a talking bird that was just screaming your name like a dark whisper in the shadows. You know, it's not really what I imagined. When I imagined a dark whisper in the shadow, and she like pulls out her business card, which says Ichi, a dark whisper in the shadow. <laughs> she like flips it over and she throws her shit. You, the, the detective vibe is not working for me that well. Um but Screaming Bird does seem to be more my style. Thank you. Um, thank you for, for this. And I guess I'm going to get to work on this Dolly who? Tontine. Dolly Tontine. Dolly Tontine. Well, I think I'm going to be working nine to five to figure this out. So thank you for for all your help. Uh, is that all? Uh, that That's it. Uh, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go have an espresso and pass out. He vanishes, uh, looking at the envelope, opening it up. Uh, you see it's an invitation to the Miss Dragon's Grave beauty pageant, uh, asking you to come and be a judge alongside some of your other heroes of the world. She opens it up, reads this. Damn it, I forgot about this. <laughs> ah. She starts packing. <laughs> All right, so uh, cut to uh, Kylie. Kylie, uh, what are you doing? Uh, for this these long few months, uh, Shionobis has been traveling the world and hopefully slowly crossing off these demon names so she can take her rightful place on the throne because she figured you know it's probably time to get her ish together and do what she was born to do uh so she's trekking through forests trudging through snow and just i, w I won't say living her best life because it's definitely not her best life as she gets like bitten by mosquitoes and she's like god damn it and just keeps going and just, just living. I won't say living her best life. Just living. Okay. Great, great, great. Give me your choice then of uh, survival or uh, a roll to hit as you are hunting these these demons down. Okay. Survival or roll to hit? Mm-hmm. Okay, 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 okay. Cool, 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 cool. That's a 33 to nice. hit. 33 to hit. Okay. Really fast while I get out that thing. So, I am going to need for you to give me a roll. And what that roll will be is... Where did I put it? There it is. You said a 33? Yes. Okay. So, I need for you to roll for me a... One, two, three, four, three, three. Give me a D4. D4, the one I don't have out. So who uses D4s anymore? Gross. Hey, yeah. One. One. Okay. <laughs> In this long journey, you have slain one demon. You have tracked down and killed 
the demon known as the one who smiles. Uh, cool, 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 cool. cool. The one who smiles sounds like a dick name, anyway. <laughs> So when you when you kill them, uh, the creature, by the way, has this horribly garish like series of mouths on their face, no teeth, and they're all smiling, and they're like saying really nice, positive things in the most disturbing tone of voice you've ever heard. So tell me the tale of hunting this guy down and killing him, you know, and and sending this demon away. Um. So she would have caught wind. You know, she has informants all over the world. She would have caught wind of this entity within these mountain ranges, kind of tormenting this small village and whatnot. Um, And it's just like, just any other day that she was with the party, and it's very much her... Camping out outside of the village for, like, a week, week and a half, when she finally gets to him after, like, you know, trekking. She's angry at this point that it's taken her this long to find him. And so she's sitting outside of the village next to a fire. She's, like, drawing out a map of knowing exactly where it's going to be, what it's going to hit, what house it's going to hit at. Just very calculative. And when she finally gets the plan, she goes, got it. She swipes away the dirt to get rid of the evidence. And it's pitch dark. It's nighttime. Because what demon hunts during the day? That's kind of lame, right? Yeah. So she throws on her hood. And she essentially is no longer visible to the living and she goes from alleyway to alleyway behind back doors leaping over rooftops being as quiet as possible and she sees this kind of white toothy smile in the moonlight and she slowly creeps up behind him and Kind of perches herself up on a rooftop, takes a deep breath, pulls an arrow out of her quiver, loads it, and just fires. And without even looking, she, like, looking to see if she hits him, jumps down, knowing that she did. And it's a one shot, one kill, because she's done this before. I think this is her third demon that she's done. Yanks the arrow out of its chest puts it back in the quiver kicks dirt at the corpse and just walks back to her campsite the demon's body just rolls down the hill smoking and sizzling as it turns to ash and is banished from this plane and dead you get back to your campsite and there you see uh you see your old friend, Larry and Voss, just kind of Fuck hunched me. over the fire, poking it with a stick. Hey, how's it going? What are you doing here? A frown just crosses his bearded face as he goes, he reaches into his like red, the only shirt he owns, that red, horrible baggy tunic, pulls out a letter and he says, Apparently your address is my home, which I know is not true. So you're probably running away from something. Here you go. He'll take the letter. So then how'd you find me? I asked for a woman, a uh, bad attitude, big bow, looking to kill something. Yeah, rested itself. I don't have a bad attitude. It's called charm. Look it up. I think it's very charming. But then again, Mm. I have a bad attitude. Yeah, we can see that from a mile away. And she's going to open the letter. 
you open it up and it says, Hey, Shionibis, uh, uh, it's time once again for the first ever annual inaugural Dragon's, Miss Dragon's Grave Beauty pageant. And like in small writing, you can see Isua's handwriting and, and they're saying, remember this was a thing that you said you, like you promised? I expect to see you in a couple of weeks at Dragon's Grave. Love you, bye. Shit. <laughs> and she's just going to toss the letter into the fire and just like, uh. So, you want to do me a favor? Maybe. Uh, I need someone to fill in for me at a place for something. No, but I'll go with you if you want the company. Sure. All right. Dragon's Grave, right? Are you reading my mail? Yeah. What else came in the mail then? No, just that. That's it. I give you props for resealing it and everything. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. All right. See you there in a few weeks. Uh, If you need a boat, I can get one of the... One of the Ulfgaard boats come around. You want the long one, the short one, the pretty one? I don't need a boat. I'll oh. be fine. All right. Hold up. Hold up. Why the fuck <laughs> is he offering her a goddamn boat? To ride together, not alone. He knows what happens when he gives say, her a boat alone. He he <laughs> Uh, so with that, Larry and Voss just turns around and then starts trudging uh, off and vanishes in the horizon, um, as he's wont to do. Uh, and now we're going to cut over to uh, Wes. Wes, please tell us, where is Dra- uh, Dragon right now? I almost called you Dragear. Like a, is that the... Combination. Yeah, am I Tar- losing my Tar-Gear. mind? Targear is the, this is the last name, but yes, it's... You did drag gear, but that's fine. I'm losing my mind. Cool, cool, cool. Good. That's uh, okay. Um, so yeah, Dragon um is in Spygar, and he's currently picking up food from the market to make his wife and son, who don't know that they're his wife and son, a meal. Okay. Uh go ahead and give me then uh ooh, crafting or diplomacy. I think I'm horrible at both of those. Uh, So, great. Okay, so that's uh, 29. 29, okay, cool. Um, You make the the dish. Uh, Spygar is very much an ingredients-based diet. It's not like you're going to be doing anything insanely, unless it's like a a dessert, you're not going to do anything insanely uh, 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 risky. So as long as you... Fish... Yeah. Stuff, yeah, largely fish, red meat, nuts, some spices, just kind of thrown on there. Um, describe for me what your wife and child look like. Uh, okay, so his wife is very much, uh, Dragon's wife is very much what you would consider like a Nordic uh, wife to be. She's got blonde hair, like, tannish skin uh and uh his son has like dirty blonde brownish hair uh he's about i think it's i think he's seven now or no 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 he's older than that so i think he's 11 or 12 um and he's got bright blue eyes and he's like he's a 12 year old but he's getting tall like I think he's like Dragon was like six four six five before you know his transformation. So I think his son's probably like five ten. So like getting close to Dragon's height. Okay. Um, and uh, so yeah, they're uh, that that's that's his wife and child. Um, and yeah. All right. So as your wife and child are eating a dinner that they don't know that their dad is cooking, uh. There's a knock at the door, and uh, the the mother of the house, in Spiger culture being the owner of the house, gets up and goes to the door. Uh, they receive a letter, close the door suspiciously behind them, and sit down, looking very confused. Uh, they thank you so much for this meal. They open it up, and their hand goes on their mouth immediately, and tears start to well up in their eyes, and they drop the letter on the ground. 
I'm she, afraid of this. She is eating her meal out of, you know, because she's hungry and polite. She slows down a little bit, uh, and she excuses herself to just kind of go outside. You hear the sound of wood being violently thrashed as she is getting her emotions out through uh, wood cutting. You can just, and wood splinters. Uh, so Dragon's immediately going to be like, look to his son who thinks that this is mom's friend uh, <laughs> and just kind of like walk outside. It's like, um, is everything all right? Uh, you see what you know to be your wife. She doesn't know that you're her husband. Uh, she's kind of like uh, bunched up her dress a little bit and tightened her, her belt. She has uh, this really big two-handed axe and she is just busting stumps of wood and putting them aside and she's just um it's it's nothing i got a letter in the mail for my my dead husband and you know and i thought i'd never see his name again but it's his full name and i don't know how to handle it Wham! breaks another tree um so if Dragon could go pale, he does. And he's just kind of uh wow, that's um strange. What did the letter say? It said Dear Dragon, you are invited to a beauty pageant in some place called Dragon's Grave. I've never even heard of it. And why does the dad doesn't know his full name? He's been dead for like many years. Wham! Breaks another tree. Mm, did it say who it was from? I didn't read that far. Just a little bit and then I ran away. Well, uh, I'll I'll read the rest of the letter. And he just kind of like very tensely goes and turns around and goes to pick it up. Yeah, it says like, you know, dear Dragon Targir, uh, the day is finally upon us. Uh, the beauty pageant is, is happening in a few weeks. Please get a dragon, dragon's grave immediately. Uh, you are needed for the beauty pageant and uh, the judging and everything else. Uh, and in like, Isola's hands, it just says, man, I really hope this gets to you and not like your wife, but considering how the postal system works. Apologies in advance. And he's just whispering under his breath, like, you know everything. You knew this would happen. I am absolutely teaching your daughter fireball. <laughs> I'm sure somewhere off in the magical distance, you can just feel Isuo, and they're like, oh, oh no. That's going to be terrible. And Dragon's just gonna, like, uh, and, like, looks at his son. And then looks outside to his wife with a battle axe. Or, you know, and it's just like, yep, yeah, all right, this is gonna suck really bad. And he's going to walk outside to his wife and just, um, so, uh, this letter reminded me of something very important. Uh, I may have lied to you. What do you mean you lied to me? So I was nervous. My my name isn't actually Troy. What is that like your middle name or something? Like Troy is a strong name. Thank you. That's yeah. Um This letter was for me. All right, now I got to roll for her. All right, hold on. <clears throat> See if she figures it out. He, she just looks at you. What is your first name exactly? Uh, 
look, um, I've been meaning to tell you this for a while, for a while, and I just didn't know how. I'm Dragon. I mean, it's a very common name in these parts. You know, there's so many dragons in no. right here. And he's gonna like, like he's gonna like pull the battle axe out of her hands and like toss it away <laughs> for safety and. You know, and he's just going to grasp her hands and just look at her and be like, no, I'm your Dragon. No, <clears throat> <laughs> okay. no. So you say, I'm your Dragon. And she looks at you and her face goes through a roller coaster of emotion. It is confusion, understanding, joy, and then suddenly you feel her hands grabbing you by the wrist extremely strong. Yep. She's been cutting wood for years and raising a child and teaching kids how to fight on the shield wall for years since you've been gone. And next thing you know, you are in the air as she has thrown you vertically about maybe six, eight feet up. And yeah, that you, sounds about right. And when you come slamming back down to earth, you hear, you've been dead, but not for years, leaving me alone with the child alone. Where have you, I, where have I you did been? die. Ow. I, 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 okay. Time out. I, so I really did die. That's why I look like this instead of how you remember. Ow. You were always strong, but hell. Ugh. And he's going to start to proceed to tell the story about how he was killed by a demon and then brought back into this body as a child and then uh, kind of systematically raised to be a mage, but also as a prisoner. And then he's going to kind of skip over the period where he was kind of adventuring and being like, I'm young and all this sort of stuff right to the part where he joins up with the group and then goes to save the world. And I've been trying to get back ever since, but it wouldn't have made a lot of sense for me to let the world die to come here because that wouldn't have made... Bad things would have happened to you, and I didn't want that. So... She has a few minutes, she calms down, she picks you up off the dirt, she brushes you off, and uh, she says, all right, so you're going to take me to Dragon's Grave, and we're going to use this as an opportunity to reconnect our marriage. Non-negotiable, we're going to bring the boy, he needs some culture, he's been doing nothing but fighting and eating potatoes. Potatoes? Well, we've been having not a lot of raids lately, so things are really scant. Yeah, it's mostly, you know, beets, potatoes, and pig. Well, thankfully, since I've been here, it's not, that hasn't been as bad. But yes, you can come with me to Dragon's Grave and you can meet my friends who will say everything exactly the way I said it. All right, <laughs> we're going to cut to Randy. Where is Lothier and what is he doing? So uh, we zoom in on the sort of bottom floor where that uh, of the druidic sort of circle where he's been spending hours and hours for the past few months just sort of looking at the same letter over again. But what catch, like as we're, Going into that place, we just sort of see some little drips of mud falling from the ceiling. Uh, and then Lothir, who's like hunched over a book, uh, the the book for the Druidic Circle of the Mud, um, he sort of listens for a moment and then stops. And then you hear just a little as something moves a little bit again. And then a drip of, of mud and then he goes, Dorora, I told you not to be sneaking around when I was reading. 
And then just from the ceiling, a small, tiny little, like, almost like this big little gloop of mud that is in the shape of a very, like, young, like, rock-like earth elemental. It's a wisp of mud element. Um, it's an earthen familiar that he's learned to make over this time. And her name is Dorora. Uh, and she has, like, this little sort of almost quinceanera-esque dress made of mud that like drips around like as she moves towards uh him but I, 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 what what does she sound like actually i'm gonna let you do that oh, okay PJ. okay well i was gonna ask you what she sounds like all right uh, in that case uh so Doroa, uh she's gonna sound like um oh okay <laughs> she's going to be a little princess and now she sounds like Dragon's mother or wife damn it hold on let me fix this um <laughs> my dumb oh, go all... nordic yeah Pull don't... out of the nordic <laughs> just, just... hello none of that uh also yeah, hi... my wife my dragon's wife is mrs doubtfire <laughs> <laughs> my wife Ho hello to the raid for last lost cabin rp lost caravan sorry lost caravan rpg hello osiris 113 it's great to see all y'all in the chat um my brain kind of wants to make her like Adora because her name is Doroa. So yeah. like, if that's okay, she'd be like, hi, my name is Doroa. Dora. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Does she talk to the audience? Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> hi legends, my name is Doroa. Oh no. Okay, I She's told you that there's no one else here. It's just you and me. Calm down, okay? I said, I'm trying to understand what this letter is about and where this archdruid is. D don't sneak up on people. That's not friendly. When my friends meet you, they're they're not going to like being stuck up on, especially the blue one. Remember that. The blue one does not like to be stuck up on. I will make sure to announce myself. Hello, my name is Daroa. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and so that's what he's doing. He's he's reading the book. <laughs> okay. Um, as you're reading the book, uh, give me a give me a nature check. Ooh, I like those. All right. First roll, fifteen. But this is Pathfinder. That's right. I have a twenty-two. So that's a thirty-seven. <laughs> oh my god all right so um as you're looking at this book uh you see um a chapter about how some some of the first druidic magic some of the very oldest druidic magic was initially uh brought about by nadir um but there was another uh group of, of um magic users that came across was called the great walkabout and it keeps talking about this farmer from another place just was on a walkabout and sowing seeds all over the world. And he taught some of some aspects of druidity, um, including, uh, but not limited to, stuff about trees. Oh. And as you're, as you're kind of reading this, you, you feel a presence uh, around your abode as uh, I believe some of your, your mud powers kind of lets you like build a structure and kind of control it. You feel a presence and it is actually in a, a, a lesser, a lesser earth Titan at your door. Just banging on it. Uh, I wasn't expecting guests, Dorora, were you? My name is Dorora. I no, have no have, guests. You don't have to say your name every time. It's, I, I know you were just made the other day. It's fine. We'll work on that. Um, and he gets on up uh, and uh, heads to the door. Right. Uh, hello? In a, a language, do you speak, um, I think it's called Terran, uh, the language of the earth people, the, the, the earth elementals? I do not. I do not have a specific earth elemental language. So after a few <laughs> after a few seconds, it becomes clear that there's a miscommunication and you can hear this gravelly sigh, like <sighs> okay, fine. Hi. 
um, I'm your neighbor, and I got some of your mail. And he hands you a letter that uh, has your name on it, sure enough. I, I pick it up and then go, who sends mail to a druidic order? Uh, <laughs> well, thank you, uh, kind elemental. Uh, I need to give you a pie or something someday as a good neighbor. So thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> He closes Bye. the door. He goes, whew, I've never met the neighbors, but they seem like nice folk. <laughs> and he opens the, the letter. And sure enough, it says like, greetings, uh, Lothier, I almost called you Lothier Targaryen. God damn it. <laughs> Lothier Vanillison. <laughs> you are cordially invited to continue your duties as the judge in the Miss Dragon's Grave beauty pageant happening in a few weeks. We love to see you then. Uh, signed, Isuo. And in, in small print, it says, I really hope this doesn't end up in the local Titan uh, community. I can only imagine how awkward that is. I'm so, 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 so sorry. Yeah. Uh, Isuo, you knew this was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but he begins to pack. <laughs> All right. Uh, you begin to pack. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you see all those great notes about, uh, the walkabout farmer in your book. Uh, so, uh, I guess we're going to make one last loop just to kind of close this out. Uh, Sydney, Alona, after you've kind of put the book away, Zara Lior comes back with an invitation from the door. They say, uh, someone was asking for you. I thought I'd at least, you know, run some interference. Just make sure you get the, uh, mail though, you know. Oh, thank you. Take the letter. Open the letter. What yeah. does the letter say? Greetings, Elona. You are called upon for your duties as being a contestant in the uh, Miss Dragon's Grave beauty pageant, which will be happening in a few weeks. See you soon. I forgot about that part. <laughs> uh, Elona stares at this letter and kind of freezes and goes, I need to make a few calls. Um, and she starts doing the um, the talking circle spell that um, who was it? Old Man Sanin taught uh, taught them the communication spell. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna do that. She's gonna call Shiona this. <laughs> Shiona Shionabis, sometime after Larry and Voss trudges off, you get a you get a call. Hello. How's, Jesus Christ. How's demon hunting going? Fine. Who are you? What do you want? Wait, I need to know where the voice comes out of PJ. Like, you gotta, <laughs> you can't just like leave this up to my imagination. <laughs> I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave that up to the um uh the casters of the speaking ritual are, are they hearing it in the head or do you are you appearing like in a hologram like in star wars what's what's the vibe oh my god i would love if it was just a tiny little alona that just like pops out of shionibus's bag like a little like a little princess leia but just goes hi throws Hello. whole bag into fire <laughs> no jesus christ <laughs> demon oh, oh, really. very much on edge you know uh, uh hey what's what's up you can't run away from this who says i was running you have to come with me shionibus you have to come with you where i don't know what you're talking about shionibus you got a letter don't tell me you didn't get a letter i know you got a letter i wouldn't have if he hadn't shown up and dropped it off who dropped it off I have so much to fill you in on, Alona. Oh my god. <gasps> oh, I'm gonna exciting. lose my mind. Yes. This is just what Sydney and Kylie's conversations are like. <laughs> I was gonna say, this kind of seems a little familiar. <laughs> Oops. Yikes. <laughs> Too much bleed, it's fine. Um, you can't, you can, I, 
Shonibus, I know you. I know you're going to run away. I know you're not going to want to do this, but I need you to do this because I forgot that I said I would compete in this thing. And I know that you did too. So you can't leave me up there alone. Shonibus, you can't leave me up there alone. I need you to be there. You're, you're I can't. Terrible I'm literally signal. in your pocket. You can't pretend they're static. I'm right here. Okay, but like, do we have to go? I yes. really don't want to. Alona, I am a queen in waiting. I have bigger things to do at the moment than participate in a pageant. And um, so do you. The visage of Alona climbs up your arm from your bag and onto your shoulder. <laughs> um, Yeah, but like, if you think about it, what is more important than bringing two people together? like tobias and Hera, which was kind of the whole point of the whole pageant anyway um uh, hey hey it's a noble cause unless you still have a crush on tobias oh my god okay fine here's the deal if dragon goes then i'll go excellent then at least it'll be entertaining this is good and you see a load of disappear she dials up Dragon. <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, zoom ahead a little bit and say that uh, everyone is on their way to Dragon's Grave, the city of Dragon's Grave. Uh, and it is now time for the pageant. Isuo has spared no expense, uh, making all the connections across the world. This is, this is not just a form of entertainment and empowerment. This is also now a, a like almost like Eurovision. Like it's borderline political now because you're seeing like people from all over the world like contributing something and trying to like look good on the global stage, of which the stage is beautiful, immaculate, great awning. And and this is also helpful because all the representatives of Dragon's uh, Grave, uh, uh, to buy um, Tabitha Graves. Uh, the leader of the the Dragon Ball team, everyone is out trying to like shake hands and be like, "Hello, uh, members of Acadian uh, nobility. Hello, members of Adolphon's Senate. Hello, uh, you know, welcome to a city that's been lost for a couple thousand years. Um, we're cool. It's all it's all building up." <clears throat> huh. Sydney looks like you looked like you were gonna like ask a question or something. So it's already all set up. So where do we go? They're like a green room where we see each other for the first time in a while. <gasps> yeah. In fact, let me ask you, do do you want to describe your entrance in a dragon's grave or do you want to just skip right to the green room? Hmm. How about describe walking into the green room as the entrance? I like that compromise. So we're going to all, uh, we're all going to cut to the green room. And who's who's first? Who's first in the green room? Ilona's always on time. Ilona's on time. Okay. Yeah. It's not early, actually. I think she's already in the green room, to be okay. honest. Ilona, you walk into the green room. You see a shadow in the corner. You see <laughs> you see a small cloaked figure cloaked in a cloak but also cloaked in shadow. What do you do? Uh, um, <laughs> do I get the sense? Is there, is there an intimidating aura coming from the shadow? Or is it the aura of one of my favorite rock dwarfs on the planet? It's so intimidating. You're not sure. Right. There's so much shadow in that corner. You see like a mm. lamp nearby has been smashed. Oh, to add oh. more shadow. Good, good. <laughs> um, Ichi's going through her goth phase. Um, so Alona is going to uh, slowly enter the room and pause before she goes ahead and goes, Oh, it's so dark in here. That's strange. I wonder where everybody is. There's nobody else in here. Just me. Alone. And suddenly, 
the figure in a cloak, the cloak turns around, tears off the cape, and to your supr utter surprise, it's Ichi, and she says, well, you're wrong, Alona. <laughs> you're not alone. I'm here. Wow. I had no idea. Ichi, when did you become a rogue? That's not important. You need to be more perceptive, Alona. The dangerous world out there. Who knows who could have snuck up on you? I, I myself have learned many things in our time apart. How to be sneaky. How to be early to events. This is the first time I've ever done that. It was, I've been here for six hours. Yeah. Um, but I miss you. And she runs and gives you. you a hug. I'm going to hug you too. And I'm going to think to myself, is this what Ichi's like when she doesn't have coffee for like <laughs> over a month? Holy shit. You feel like a silent, small sob. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, all right, who's next? Who's next to enter? I, I'll, I'll walk in. <clears throat> so Lothir walks in. Um, but instead of just like, like scraggly out, like leather outfit sort of he, he had on, he's actually looking really fancy. Um, he's wearing uh, what seems like it is an outfit made of like plant life so it's like a, a vested suit with like a long tail and he's carrying a staff and he these are some fancy druidic uh ritual clothes he found inside the circle of the druids <laughs> the mud druids so he walks in and he goes ah. And I know we said, and and you hear him talking to someone, but you're not quite sure who, but he's like turning his head back behind him. And he goes, I know we said we'd try to look nice for this, but I don't know if this is my style. Alona, itchy. And he drops the stick, the giant staff, and he just runs over and gives you a hug. Add you to the hug bundle. Whoa. It's been so long. There's so much to tell you. I, I learned a lot. I'm sure you learned a lot. You probably were reading a lot. And whoa, uh, aren't you just the most stealthy, sleuthy person I've ever met? You barely even knew I was here. I, 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 whoa. You've all gone soft. <laughs> we need to get your senses back in order, back in fighting order. But it's good. You look so good. Though. Well, th thanks. Uh, I I thought it would it fit the occasion as a judge. It's very nice. Oh, by the way, I have a friend here, and he puts out his hand, and there's nothing there, and then he snaps, and out of nowhere, this it's a familiar. <laughs> so, hey, this is Delora. <laughs> <laughs> this is my new friend. I made her. I know. Ichi, like, <laughs> the aura of dark shadow around Ichi drops, and you see, like, basically, like, anime sparkles in her eyes, and she just kind of, like, gets up really close. She's like, hi. Why are you so cute? Oh, my God. <laughs> now, I want to check in with Randy. Randy, do you still want me to do the voice? Do you want me to pick a new voice? Let me know what you're comfortable with. <laughs> For today it's fine okay she's for growing and evolving so her voice can change from time to time it's, it's fine and she she kind of like like nervously kind of plays like with her dress and she goes hello my name is Dolores is Dolora Dorora so Dorora it's it's Doro and then an a at the end so Doro is the word for mud in Japanese oh, oh. Doro Doro hello my name is Dorora I'm new Yes, it's true. I love you. <laughs> and, and she just kind of goes, I love you too, new person. She's very excited to me. All right. Uh, who wants to come in next? I'll go next. 
All right, please tell us how you enter the green room. It's not graceful. Uh, it's very much, uh, I don't want to go in there. You have to go in there. I don't want to go in there. Well, you have to go. It's very much her arguing with Larian and him pushing her through this door. Like, I don't want to be here. So you can't make me. And then she like gets shoved in and the door quickly closes behind her as she like turns to like jiggle the handle, realizes it's locked turns to face everyone and just Shionibus! I mean, Shionibus. They're Ilona? making so much noise. Ilona's gonna tackle you. Ah! <laughs> nobody's, nobody's stealthy. I missed you so much. I, I've missed you too. It's been a long... She, Ichi, are you doing something new? Like eyeliner? In yeah. New? <laughs> it's supposed to help me melt into the shadows. But honestly, sometimes great. it's just melting all over my face. Y you know, I'll send you the stuff I use and it'll look fabulous. Not that it doesn't look fabulous already, oh. but it'll stay in one spot. Wait, so can I do a mud spell that would help with that? Mud, mud is like, it's magic. <laughs> it's literally, it can help with like shading and Am colors. I Am I getting a Lothier spa day already? Yeah. I mean, I, I can do it any time now. Like, I can literally oh. go outside and build a little hut that is just a, a spa room hut for it. For... Okay. I haven't done anything to deserve this yet, Lothier. You can't just be giving away spa days. All right. You I'll save it for a special occasion. You're right. You're right. I, I didn't realize what I was doing. I apologize. But I'm gonna special occasion. I'm holding okay. you to it. I'm gonna do something useful, and then you and then you can give me a spot day, okay? You I don't deserve do it yet. Something useful all the time, but yes, all right. The next. Oh no, my thing. life. <laughs> all right. Well, next up, certainly not least, uh, how does Dragon enter the green room? So, you kind of hear Dragon's voice before he walks in, and you just hear this. I know, right? The food is so good and you can get anything you want from it. It's it's crazy. Anyway, and he like opens the door and behind him are his wife and son. They just went to the the, the dragon restaurant. He comes in and is like, everybody, Ichi, why are you hiding in a corner? You can see me? Well, of course you can see me. I want you to see me. Who's this? Ah. So everyone, um, this is my wife and son. Hello. I, 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 what is uh, that? I, I just didn't know what, what to say. No, oh, no, I was your mud friend. Oh, our mud friend. Yes. Uh, this is an elemental. It, it, it's a little, yeah. That's yeah. new. It, it, it she, her name is Dorora. She um is developing as I am learning to control uh mud and earth magic. So I uh, and every, everyone I, I, I made a tiny person, but you brought an entire human and a human yeah. you made before. I both this... made tiny people. Mine may have taken slightly longer to grow. Okay. Um, Definitely more. This is my this is my wife Kira and my son Eric. I crouched down to say, "Nice to meet you, Eric." And nice it's a to pleasure meet to meet you, you as well. He's also twelve know. and he's five ten. So oh <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, he is shorter than me though. Still yes. <laughs> I what. <laughs> I'm six feet, so he's at least two inches. Two short. inches. I you were five eight. No. I like he's the I, I like the idea that you've been baby talking your mud construct for way too long, so you kind of just like Talk are unable to, to change out. Of that. <laughs> right. Sorry, sorry about that. Like people who are hard. kindergarten teachers. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're gonna say Wes. 
Yeah, and it, it, he's just gonna go. Um, this is Alona, Chionobus, Ichi, and Lothier. These are the ones that I've been adventuring with, and uh, um, who I helped save the world. I, I definitely, I was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you you were there. Why do you feel the need to tell us that you were there saving the world with us? Oh no, I was them. But oh. mostly, I was. I, I the story I told was it was mostly you, Alona. Um, I wanted. I was ready to do fighting. Oh, so, but you're the one who I feel like. Uh, anyway, we don't have to talk about who did, who did what when we saved the world. Um, I mean, you've only you've done heard. it twice, though. I, so I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Yeah, we've L- L- Lothier and I have only done it once. You guys have done it twice. Uh, I may or may not have been bragging about you all a little. That's nice. Well, you have plenty to brag about. You're so good at blowing things up. And also, your wife is so strong. Yes. You're beautiful. She walks like right up to her. You're beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. I love your choice of war paint. Very fierce. Thank you. Then Ichi walks past Jaira and just like <laughs> punches him in the arm. <laughs> it's like. All right. Well, after some time, uh, you are met <clears throat> by two frames at the door, opens up. You see Isuo ver- wearing a gorgeous uh, uh, white and gold uh, ceremonial like robe and gown. Um, and they get you ready and put you into spots. You know, if you're going to be competing. Uh, go right ahead. If not, that's cool. We can put you on the judge's table. All the judges, please go to your table. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and you see there's another uh, weirdly familiar but foreign-looking frame next to this person. Um, about six foot something, wearing very loose, comfortable, plain clothes. Like a complexion that looks like a little bit of autophon, a little bit of or. Blonde hair, but now it's just kind of long, kind of kept in a very loose ponytail, maybe. Eyes is glittering this, with platinum. Is, well, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Is this Tobias? Tobias. Raphaelis. <laughs> and it's a pleasure to see you all again. glow up tobias how have you been <laughs> i uh i was asked to go back of course to be the judge or one of the judges on the panel i'm i'm doing i'm doing well i, I i've stepped away from the hospitalier position and i've mostly just been uh, a caregiver on the island for platinum hammer caregiver yeah uh i i heal those who need it on the island um i'm there for uh, listening when someone's having a rough day, all the, the the shadows and the demons from past come back. Uh, I'm not about the the adventuring anymore. I'm now more about just trying to make things peaceful. Ilona's gonna go up to Shionibus. I think we broke Tobias. <laughs> I, I I walk over I to Tobias and I go, buddy, you deserve the rest. Thank you, my friend. It has been a very welcome six months, for sure. Well, let us go do this pageant. I will meet you at the judge's table. I'll see you then. And he walks out, and Isuo just kind of goes, Crazy, right? I thought I was going to see you. Right? What? Happened. I don't know. A, a life crisis and uh, realizing that every moment is is useful, but but also uh, I, it is strange for him. Uh, it's an imposter for sure, like a hundred percent. I mean, on. wait, wait, guys! If Tobias has healed his trauma, then maybe has he seen Hera yet? Yikes! That might be a different type of trauma, but sure, yeah. let's traumatize him again. Oh, I mean, he's going to have to see her. She's a contestant in the pageant. He's 
going to have to see her for like an extended period. He's going to have to be looking directly at her as part of his job. It's our job, Ichi, to make sure he is a fair and a just judge. And make him look the whole make, time. Make him pay a lot of attention. Attention. Yes. All imposter. Right. You know, I think imposter Tobias will be a good judge. Regular <laughs> Tobias probably wouldn't be. Please don't call him imposter Tobias until we know he's an imposter. I, I don't want to make him sad again. <laughs> Wait. Uh, Shonibus, do you still have a crush on Tobias? Yeah. No, I never did. First off. He's just a really good friend. See? Yeah, that's really what they friend. all say. <laughs> Insight. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> you lie like a rug. Do that. No, oh. that's okay. Each you will just go like this. That's it. <laughs> I, 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 I lean <laughs> over to Ichi and I go, isn't that what all of the protagonists in your little novels do? That's what they always say. Yeah, yeah, it's like almost like a law. You have to write that in the fan fiction. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a phase. I'm sure they'll end up together. <laughs> also, I just want to note that uh, Dragon did guilt trip Isuo into letting him use the doors to get here <laughs> so they didn't have to travel by boat. <laughs> hey. All right, well, let us skip ahead. It is now time for... Let's see if I can find this. I don't have this on this playlist. Cool, whatever. Let's go with whatever we got. That's it. It is now time for Miss Dragon's Grave, the inaugural first-time annual competition to see who from among all these amazing contestants will be the one, the only... Miss Dragon's Grave. And coming back to you live on the stage that time forgot for almost 5,000 years is... Poof, a big beacon of light. Isuo just glittering, gleaming, just shining in the light. And they say, hello everyone, and welcome to Miss Dragon's Grave. Will the contestants please come on stage for the first challenge? That challenge being the talent competition. So, at this point in time, if you are participating, I believe Alona is going to be in the beauty pageant, uh, then you will be doing this competition in minigames. Now, if you'd like to participate, you can pretend to be one of the other participants. Those participants are Chifun from Shin, Hera, of course, the half-orc mercenary uh, uh, captain, Slamantha, all the way from Osmocon, Alona, Bloodhound, the Night Witch from New Jack City, who um, shared a kiss with Dragon in the Pink Lace Speakeasy. I don't know if you remember that. You son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. I didn't even know your wife was going to be here. Um, <laughs> Bowen Rionag, the White Queen, I'm sorry, the Ice Queen of oh, uh, Adolf on Prime Senate, and Shionibus. So. If you I are. guess I have to place Lamantha. Like, <laughs> gotta represent. Absolutely. I guess. <laughs> so then, let's get it started. Chu Fen is gonna come up and do a performance check. She's gonna set the pace for you all to see if you can beat her number. If you beat it, you'll get a point. But actually, really, you'll get whatever Lothier says you get because he's the judge. That being said, I'm gonna have her do a performance check as she gets out a beautiful musical instrument. Ooh, okay, that is going to be, yeah. That's gonna be a 33 to start as she plays a beautiful song from Shin and you see the wind itself actually start to coalesce all around her and carry the music out to the competition. So next up, we have Hera. By the way, Lothier, when you're at your place, right? Tobias is yeah. right next to you and he's like, hello again, so good to see you, my friend. Ah. It's, it's nice to see you too, but they're, they're doing their acts. Can we pay attention? Right, of course. We can so. talk during the break. Of course. Tobias kind of puts his elbows on the table and looks up and sees Hera now take the stage. Who wants to roll for Hera's talent? <laughs> I'll roll for Hera's talent. I don't know what her modifier is, but uh, Lothir's watching. He's looking back and forth between uh, Tobias and Hera. Hera rolled a 
a nat 20 on her oh, performance. What? <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, nat 20 on performance. Please tell me the tale. Yeah. What is she, what's her talent? What is she doing? <laughs> I don't know that much about it. <laughs> oh, that's, that was all season one Mercenary. Stuff. Really buff half orc lady. She is the, the owner and captain of a mercenary company. Okay, okay. So what she does is she, real quick, she didn't know what to do for, for the talent portion. So she relied on her strengths as a leader of a mercenary band and had and ordered some of the most like fine precision, like movements and, and formations that just like wowed the audience. It literally looked like a sun was setting made of people as she ordered them to do it. And then the final finale was a backflip into their arms and a wink at uh, Tobias in the judge stand. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna roll for Tobias here. Ichi <laughs> leans over to Tobias at the judging stand and says, I love a tactical woman. <laughs> you you see, you look at Tobias and he's his, his mouth isn't quite on the, on the ground, but it's definitely like a little kind of pause, like, Yes, um, a commanding presence is always a refreshing uh, change. <clears throat> and uh, seems a little distracted. So she's not was... distracted if this is exactly what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah, well, case in point, um, he is starting to get a little blushed now, a little, little rosy in his cheeks as he's embarrassed by himself. But he is, uh, he's noticing Hera for sure. Next up, we have Slamantha. Slamantha, <laughs> the uh, dancer, wrestler. Was Listen. there anything else cano canonic about Slamantha that I, I do not recall? Oh, she her was... appearance, her attitude. That's right. Uh, she was a tall, buff, blonde woman that usually wore like bright pink patent leather outfit. I think she had her hair like in a fancy either pigtail or ponytail. I remember okay. one. Uh, she was a dancer, I believe a, a, a roller derby enthusiast, obviously a championship wrestler. Uh, oh, she was the muscle for, I'm pulling out season one stuff, the muscle for Princess Princess Bashley. And ah, yeah. she then uh, overturned Princess Bashley after she was mistreated one too many times and joined, I forgot the title, but the all-female wrestling stable to kick her out, effectively. Okay. Slamantha rolls onto stage in her rollerblades and she does like a little bit of a, almost like an ice skating starts like an ice skating routine some turns some waves to the audience and then she goes like this waits and out from off stage a big red ball rolls on she plops herself on top of it and starts balancing on her rollerblades on the ball Someone throws hula hoops from off stage and she starts just everything. It's just a, a chaos act of, of skill and balance. And for the final move, she kind of bounces down off of the ball into the splits and she says, believe in yourself. Love it, okay, <laughs> your choice. And I'll, I'll let you use your um your stats for this because you you have a similar uh, uh, lifestyle and backstory. Uh, give me either an athletics or a performance check. All right, we'll do performance. Where's my calculator? The twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay. Samantha, the 23, looks pretty good, pretty good. Amazing performance. Everyone's a little scared for her sometimes, you know, when like you see a performance, you're like, that's amazing. I hope she doesn't die. Oh, oh God. Oh, that was amazing, <laughs> but thank God it's over. She didn't die. Um, next up, we have Alona. Hmm. Yeah, Alona had no time to plan this. Um, so, what she's gonna do um, is she's gonna go on stage and she's just gonna do a light show. She's just gonna use her shiny, shiny powers from her god and go, please, 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 please. And around you're gonna see pink and purple passion flowers just kind of explode like fireworks around her and above the audience. Nice. All right. Uh, so you're using your magic? I am, in fact, using my magic. Probably Divine Lands because it's a cantrip, but it's going to look pretty instead of murdering people. Yeah. 
Give me that religion check. I will. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I should say everyone starts with one hero point every game. Do I want to use my hero point on a beauty pageant, though? I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know your life. I. But I don't know what you're gonna throw at us. You never can. How could you? It's fine. It, it's fine. No, I'm gonna roll again. Okay. That was really bad. That was like really bad. That was like a three. I was like, you hit a bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. You suffer <laughs> like an identity crisis, you know, yeah. Mildly okay. Um, what was the roll again? Religion? Mm -hmm. No. It was religion. Haha, -ha, so it's a 35. 35, all right. Uh, so, Shonabis, I need to know, are you in the beauty pageant? I'll go on stage because Alana's like, God, if you're not here, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. So, what are you gonna do uh, on stage? Uh, she's going to. Also, didn't have any time to prepare. So she's going to set up targets at like the back of the audience. Ooh. Okay. And just have target practice essentially some trick shots hell yeah give me um uh give me a roll to hit oh i'm also going to use a hero point because yikes Ugh, okay. shoots an audience member on accident <laughs> uh, that wasn't great but that's better that's uh hold on calculator 31. 31, okay. It's a it's a really good series of shots. The crowd is very impressed. I'm sure Lothier is feeling this way. You see Tobias, you know, taking notes. What what is what is Lothier's thought so far with all these amazing acts he's seen? So Lothier uh, is really excited for his friends. Uh, he is watching to see uh, what Tobias is thinking during Chionabis's part, because I don't know. Y'all two have some... There's something there. Uh, but he also uh, is really excited because, I mean, exactly what he wanted, which was Hera to do something to impress uh, Tobias, is happening. So he's like, mission accomplished. But this is a way bigger scene than he was expecting. So every time he's, he's writing notes, he's like, oh, that was good. Oh, that was good too. Oh, so so was that one. <laughs> I don't know how do you choose. <laughs> well, while while Shonabis is picking those shots, shots you're gonna hear uh, uh, Tobias, almost like a little bit of older Tobias going. That's right, Shio, you show those targets who's boss. Yes, damn right, right in the bullseye, and he's just taking notes like bullseyes, because of course she would. Like just on his notes, gassing her up. All right. Now I've already rolled for uh, rolled for Bowen. I'll, I'll tell her now. She comes out in this gorgeous white uh, gown with this like white damask on it, and this beautiful white lion mantle that covers up like her entire arm. She rushes it aside dramatically, exposing her beautiful white uh, 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 ice magic arm, and then she starts kind of taking her hand around, kind of picks the snowflake out of midair, slams it on the ground, and a gorgeous ice statue of the monument you all made on the standing sea in Dragon's Grave stands behind her. It out in the audience, just when you think it's done, forming from an ice crystal, is a statue of Cormat pointing back to her in the stage with your with your monument on it. And she's like, <clears throat> and walks off. She got an 18 on the die face and she is a master uh, wizard. So there you go. Ichi's clapping and um, ice comes out of her hands. That's right. <laughs> Little ice cubes come flying out erroneously. <laughs> well, last and certain at least, Bloodhound. Now, uh, Wes, do you want to roll for Bloodhound or should I? I'll roll for Bloodhound. That's fine. Okay. Oh, no, Bloodhound. That's a six on the die face. <laughs> six. Oh, no. She. 
God love her. She proceeds to recite a bunch of filing inventory, like, data protocols. Um, it's very impressive that she has it memorized, but bless her heart, it's not quite hitting. The audience is being very polite with her, like, yeah, mm-hmm. Dewey Decimal, yeah, oh, uh, buddy, boy. But everyone gives her a roaring applause as she leaves. <laughs> yeah, how does Dragon look when he sees Bloodhound again? Oh yeah, oh, oh, I need to make, I need to make a. You know what? I'm He's... gonna, do, I'm gonna be really cruel, Wes. I need yeah. you to roll a perception check. A perception <laughs> check? Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, I roll high. Uh, it's a 35. 35. Yeah, that perception check is against yourself. Bloodhound saw ya. Yeah. And she gives you a little, <laughs> like, a cute little flirty toodles as she leaves oh. the stage. Does his wife see that? Uh, thank you so much ah. for subscribing. Let me roll to see if she does. No. You roll to see if your I feel so evil today. You roll to see if your <sighs> wife noticed. I feel terrible. So I rolled a 15 on the die face. I don't know what her perception is, but of course I roll a six for Bloodhound and super high for Dragon's mm -hmm. wife. She, she sees it and she's very confused. She's like, who is that strange woman with the inventory? Uh, she's one of the night witches a there's a thing called a plane and is a pilot that flies them and fights dragons she just kind of looks you up and down mm-hmm mm-hmm okay she, i'll explain uh, later <laughs> she 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 holds your hand just kind of pats it a little bit that's it that's it for now uh all right so with that being said the scores are uh, Chiefun with a 32, Hera with a 41 on that crit, Brandon. It was awesome. Samantha, 27, Alona, 35, Shiona was 31, Bloodhound had a 22, and Bowen had a 39. So uh, we are going to rush the next two, not rush it, but we're going to make sure we get the next two things. May the judges take all these uh, into account, as well as intention. Uh, next round, we're going to make this fast. Everyone, roll for one of them. They're going to uh, 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 announce the next competition. Beauty and grace sometimes require instinct over talent. Let's see if these uh, uh, contestants can pin the camel hump on the morel. This Being, is the first time we've seen morel. Being lowered from a winch on a rope, you see in a very big puffy suit the unmistakable bulging arms oh <laughs> of Morel Harkisian in what looks like the worst camel suit you've ever seen. You are given these horrendous looking felt camel humps with like a needle sticking out of it and you have to, with your eyes closed and being spun around, find him in the center of the stage and pin it on the back of the camel suit. <laughs> now, we are going to have everyone make either a perception check or a survival check with a minus four for these contestants. Am I rolling for Bloodhound again? Please and thank you. Okay. She, I'm gonna say she's really high with inventory, so I'll give her a bonus of 16. I'm uh, sorry, uh, okay. 20. 20? Uh, that's 29 then. Oh shit. Bloodhound's got 29, it's so with a minus four? Uh, I think you said plus four. My bad. No, uh, minus four because you're dizzy and you're blind. Okay, so 25 total. 25, okay. Who's up next? So for Hera, uh, I rolled uh, a 16. Minus four is 12. 12 total? Yep. Wait, did you say it was pl she had plus 20? Uh, yes, the, the bonus would be 20, but then minus four for all the penalties. Got it. Okay, so yeah, 25. Yeah. And uh, Hera, I'm going to say Hera's got a, a 17. So, okay. So 17 plus 12. Um, 29. 29. Cool, cool, cool. All right. For Slamantha, um, it was a 13 total. I'm going to assume that she didn't take the rollerblades off, like on principle. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Uh, Sydney and Kylie, what were your rolls? I got a 30. Nice. Okay, and Shionvis, what was yours? 29. Nine, all right. Well, Bowen critically failed. Oh, no. Yikes. So, uh, as there's some awkward kind of fumbling around the dark, people are cheering you on, some are laughing, it's hard to tell what's going on because you're dizzy and it's dark and you have to kind of feel your way around with these needles with these weird humps on them. You open your eyes, just in time to hear this crystallization sound, and then a And as you open your eyes, you see uh, Alona, actually. You put the hump exactly on the back of the camel. Shionabiz, just a little under them. Everyone else got pretty close. Hera got really close as well. Slamantha's on the ground, like, like keeping her balance, because she kind of slipped on her thing, or on her, on her wheels. But Bowen just took an ice chunk with the camel hump on it and threw it at Morel. Oh my god, no! And that noise is the noise of the ice chunk kind of hitting Morel. Oh. Alona's very good at finding Morel's butt, so it worked out. <laughs> and now we go on to the third part and the final part, the ball gown Q&A. Uh, the contestants, <laughs> please describe your amazing ball gowns. We'll ask you each one question. And then after that, it's up to Lothier and Sam and uh, Wes, as Tobias' brain, to decide who wins. Okay. So without further ado, let's start off with... Uh, start off with Hera. What does Hera look like, Randy? What is she dressed in? Can you describe what she looks like? She's a mercenary. So, but uh, she's a mercenary who has a um, a desire to look like a princess and okay. woo and date like the handsome knight. Okay, That's true. Uh, it, this is like a very fancy, like Victorian era, like style dress. Like it is just super puffy, super big. It is lots of corsets. It is beautiful, long, flowy, like just there. It's uh, it's like a crimson red color, uh, for the the fire and passion that uh, she has, uh, and it's got like a rose motif. So there's lots of like ruffles in it that look kind of like roses. Nice. Um, and she is asked, uh, what is your what is your solution to world peace? How can we obtain world peace? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, she stands there. She goes, well, if the armies aren't going to do it, then the people need to rally together and create defense forces to protect like the people around them. I think groups like my mercenary company are there for any country that needs a, a helping hand in the wars. We helped in all of the struggles before, and we will be here in the future. So funding our mercenary groups and using us to uh, supplement armies is a great idea. Okay. Community? Uh, I don't know. I've ne <laughs> I've had one interaction with Hera, and it was <laughs> literally just Tobias running away from her. So... <laughs> You can definitely see Tobias is just kind of like, yes, community defenses. It's like what the Platinum Hammer does. Have people defend themselves, and and then we'll all be safe, of course. Uh, smitten by such an answer. Uh, next up, we have Bloodhound. Um, she she kind of adjusts her glasses and leans into this like magical amplification device that Yusuo has, and she just keeps it very simple and says, um... Tactical spending. Like, that that that's the solution to world peace. Yeah, tactical spending. And then she just kind of waves and walks off. It was like, I don't, why? You... Okay, next up. Uh, Slamantha. Slamantha. <clears throat> I think we've had enough of world peace. What is your favorite date? Slamantha standing there. She is wearing, like, a 
a ball gown tutu, but it's like, oh, like split down the middle and she's got sh like these shiny, like shorts that show off her thighs on underneath of it. Um, and she sits there and she thinks, ha, ah, that's really hard. Um, let me think, April 25th, because it's, you know, it's just cold enough for like a nice little sweater, but you know, not too cold. It's a really good date on the calendar. Also 25 is my favorite number. Believe in yourself. Eastwood is kind of like, things like they want to expand they go no no just keep it simple and they go like everyone you know april 25th and there's there's a round of applause uh next up alona yeah. what is your idea of the perfect night out romantically uh i love how you specified more with the question <laughs> um uh that um cool Alona's kind of standing there patting her very modest dress her mom made for her right before the competition. It's nice. It's like a nice golden yellow. Um, and she kind of pats it down slowly. And um, I would say that any time I could have a um, genuine um, conversation with the person that I care about, um, perhaps we could talk about our favorite books in a library or under the stars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's bright red um, and just keeps fiddling with her fingers and um, staring down at the stage completely um, embarrassed. <laughs> Uh, so there's 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 a, a very hard felt like oh and a round of applause, um, Shonibus. What do you feel? Can is... I do one thing before Shonibus goes? Yeah. While Sydney is doing that though, from under the seat, I'm just gonna cast Gale Blast, but lightly, and have like a wind blowing your hair like very like coolly. And this is the first time in a long time you've seen Alona's hair down from her braids. So it's long, it's my, it's me guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so her long hair just kind of blows behind her and you kind of feel like the, the light of Afra kind of flow off of her cheeks and she goes, ha. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hair waving in the wind all majestically. Uh, Shionibus, they say, what is what is the greatest inner strength uh, in yourself and in a partner? Uh, first, Shionibus is not wearing a ball gown. She's wearing her tunic that is covered in uh, dirt and blood because she doesn't give two hoots. Um... I guess it would be my leadership. I find that's probably my strongest characteristic and I don't need anyone else in a relationship status. So yeah, no one else matters. Walks, <laughs> Good walks off stage. Good response from the crowd. They're like, yeah, yeah, we love it. We love to see it. Uh, they go to um, uh, Bowen. Uh, and they ask, uh, what, what is, what is a, uh, a great, uh, gift to give? And she says, I think that would have to be my continued excellence in logistics and peacekeeping within the Autofonts, uh, uh, Senate. We're doing pretty well so far, so you're welcome. Everyone's like, eh? Um... And last but not least, at least Q Fun, uh, Q Fun, the one that did the amazing um, musical display with the with the wind. Uh, also, thank you so much for the sub, gentlemen, commander. Thank you so much. Um, they ask her what is what is the most important thing to you, and she says uh, family. And she tells a story about how her mother back in Shin was a huge part of her life. How uh, being a musician, she found out that her and her uh, powers all came from the wind, and her mother was too afraid to lose the family by letting herself 
chase the wind that was in her. And when Chu Fun became a traveling bard and musician, uh, you know, her mother always tried to hold her back until one day they finally came together and decided to let her go and let her wind be free. And because of that, you all might remember Chu Fun from uh, Shin with the uh, Two Tiger, the Imperial Tiger investigation. She was the rock star that was there when they tried to assassinate her. So they didn't win. And now she's friends with the Empress of Shin. That being said, that that gets a pretty good uh, thing. But now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna figure out who won the first annual Miss Dragon's Grave, and then go take our break. So, to my players, and of course Legends and Ledge Edge in the chats, please decide who won the first annual Miss Dragon's Grave. Oh, Ichi looks. At Lothier, like so, I imagine Tobias is like sitting in the middle of them yeah. at the judging booth, and Ichi like leans back to like catch her eye behind his back, and and she just looks at you. It's like she mouths the words, "It's Hera, right? It's Hera." Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely <laughs> got to be Hera. Uh, like uh. she just leans back forward, like so, Tobias. What, what you thinking? What what do you think? Well, you know, I really love what uh, Chu Feng had to say about family. And and that was really great. And Shonbus, of course, great leadership. Don't need a man. Love that for her. Um, I mean, I, I think Hera had some good points about a community defense. You know, we, we take care of our own kind of thing. Maybe. Yeah. Lothier, what did you think about Hera? I have her scored really high on the talent portion the question needed some work but i i, I thought she did okay um overall I, I she's she's up there uh chung uh what what's what's the woman from Sh uh shin's name uh chu fun chu fun is uh is also up there but she's not number 1 that just coming out of the gate with an act like that creating a talent from her skills as a tactician. That was impressive. My grading matrix. Oh, I, I look at it, it's just a lot. <laughs> I, she got really high points for that. Tactical skills, wow. I also saw that you were pretty impressed by two Tobias, right? Uh, yes, yes, I was. Uh, you know, I, when I first met her, she was a warrior, and it's good to see that uh, that edge is not left her. She does have an edge, doesn't she? Yeah, especially how she looked in that outfit. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, she she did like to play princess. Um, we had a nice dance one time, and she looked very, uh. Very amazing in that in that dress. He is blushing and he's getting very awkward and shy. It's almost like she's not playing princess anymore. It's like she just is a princess now. Yes. Don't like, you think? Like a warrior princess. A, yeah. And maybe she's just looking for that prince. Oh, maybe she is. Well, I ah. think either way, it sounds like we both agree Hera is the winner of this competition. I think we agree. All right. I, I, I have my vote down. It's unanimous. Right. So, uh, Isuo, here's what's going on. He, I'm uh, sorry, they hand uh, Tobias the award and kind of like, you know, kind of slinks off. They take center stage. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, are you, I'm sure, where, where are you in relation to the award ceremony? Like, as, as Hera's being presented the award for the first ever Miss Dragon's Grave. Uh, where are we? Yeah, you're like standing behind Tobias, or you're like right, like where are you at? Uh, hype woman position. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm going to whisper in Isuo's ear to allow our one of our judges to give over the award. All right. Uh huh. And, and Ichi's just like on one side of probably like on Harris' side. It's kind of just like as it gets announced, we'll just push her up there a little bit and like kind of position them nice right next to each other hmm. right. so uh they're both blushing uh hera 
is very very green and like like almost like bright neon green and pink with her blushing and tobias is very much you know very very pink as well uh and he hands her the thing the the beautiful gold statuette she takes it and she kind of holds onto his hand a little long and he's kind of like accepts her hand and they smile like idiots and you kind of hear her go i like your hair and he's like i i go thank you i i like yours too and he does, and you see a little bit of old dirtbag Tobias come in for just for a second. He does like a whole whoosh with his hair, <laughs> but now it's longer, so it's like a mane. Uh, now, I want to do a quick cutscene before we go on our break because the party is kicking off. Music is playing. Tobias and Hera are dancing together. He's gotten out of his boring clothes, and he's in his officer's uniform from the Order of the Platinum Hammer, and they are having a prince and princess time. It's like a Disney moment. It's so beautiful. As the partying's going on, you've had drinks, you've had food, you've been playing games, you've been having your fill. And then you notice Morel, not entirely, uh, not as injured as an icicle to the gut would make you think, but he comes kind of over to you all with his sister Bethrain and Hamaz. And he leans in close to you and he says, Hello, friends. Um... All right, listen, uh, we need to go somewhere quiet. I need to ask you for a tremendous favor. Of course. All right. All right. Done. Bathroom. Uh, the secured room, please. Follow me. You go into a tavern, secured room. You see uh, in the room men wearing the military armor, and uniform of the Acadian military, uh, kind of standing at attention once Morel comes walking in, followed by Hamaz and uh, Bethrain. And they close the door, and they lock it up, and one dude is on, securing the door. Morel looks to all of you. You see a table at the center with a map. And he says, I need you to help me overthrow my father. Done. Let's and do that's this. where we're taking our 10 minute break. <laughs> when we come back, <laughs> the Rebellion of Acadia. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, hell yeah. Oh. Holy shit. And we are back. Hey, everybody. Thank you for waiting for us. And now we are picking things back up where we left off. So if you remember before the break, we are now in a private room in Dragon's Grave. Morel, his sister, Bethrain. Hamas and the rest of their personal Acadian guard are locking the doors, and on the table you see a map. And he says to you, Morel says to you, leaning over the table in a hushed whisper, I need you to help me overthrow my father. Hell yes. Great. Uh, I'm in. Uh, Adri, Al Alona. Gianna, I am just Gianna. curious. I don't. Again, I've mentioned it before. Um, I did fail my word world government class in school. Um, is overthrowing like high treason? Uh, it, if you get caught and you fail, yeah, it can yeah, be. It, it, if you screw it up, yeah, that's usually how that works. Okay. Yeah. Just checking. But it won't matter because we're gonna do this. It, 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 I, I, I think you would be a much better leader or someone than than your father. I, I, I'm sorry. I know that's your dad and all, but um, that man's a bastard and caused Brack a lot of issues. Oh, I, I, that and then Alona can be a queen. Uh, I'm, I mean, uh, if, if she wants to be a queen, uh, I mean, I can step down, uh, whatever is fine with, with me. I just want my, my father out. Yeah. He, he seems like, no offense, kind of an asshole. Yeah, no, he's fine. Uh, I don't know. Oh, please. Um, what are you going to say? I don't want to interrupt you. How long have you been planning this for? Planning is not the right word. Um, recently got intel 
about my father and his health. Um, since he became king, my father has what we've been calling moods. Sometimes they last about a day or a week. Sometimes when they're really bad, it could last a month or three. He isolates himself, shuts all politics down, removes all the military and debunkers, just the whole place shuts down. This is obviously kept a secret because if anyone wanted to invade during one of my father's moods, the country would be hopefully and woefully unprepared. I just heard maybe a week ago, he's in another serious mood. This could last about a month, two months. So we have time, but we still need to move quickly. I have no love for your father. Like anyone else. From Or. Or Brack. I just want to know why. It seems... It seems sudden. I was hoping we could talk strategy, but bottom line is this. I didn't want to come in with a huge army. I didn't want to get innocent civilians involved. I didn't want to kill the, the, the palace guard. But with my father's health being what it is, suddenly, if we had an opportunity, it would be now. Ilona looks at Hamas. I'm back at morale. Um, why do you need our help? Well, for starters, I'm only one man. I have a small group of soldiers loyal to this cause. I'm going to need very powerful and very persuasive people. And hopefully, ones I can trust. Ones that I've saved the world with a couple of times. I have no idea what's waiting for me in that palace. I've been banished for so long. I figured <laughs> if I had my friends there, at least I'd be safe. So, just a quick question. Hmm. How much of the palace do you need to stay intact? Uh, well, if I'm going to be king, or if uh, anyone in the royal family, all of it, if if necessary, if possible, all of it. Okay, fair enough. Just just checking. Yeah, kind of, kind of need to live there, you know. Puts the rock back into <laughs> Luna's bag. <laughs> what do you plan on doing with him when you get to him? I don't know. I don't want to kill him. I don't want to kill anybody. That's why I'm taking this time now. Less necessary violence. Maybe talk to him. Maybe just... G g generic usurpation. Write a charter. You know, whatever the hell monarchs and nobles do. But I know for a fact that we need him off the throne. And this is the opportunity to do it. I think... Maybe the working title for what we're going to do here should be an intervention. Just because if anyone else overhears, it's a lot less treasonous than what you said. Um, and, I mean, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, what do you think? We can just call it that. Sure. I think uh, we're, we're playing nice. This is not going to end up well. Your father has caused violence around the world. He's not going to step down from the throne through some charter. Other people have asked him before to step down, and I'm sure he hasn't. I mean, in fact, if I'm knowing my, my history, some of those people have died and been murdered because of it. Yeah. I need you to understand. If you're asking us to go in there with you, I'm... I'm there. You don't have to talk me into it. But you need to be ready because at the end of the day, this is very much could end in someone having to die. Yeah, I, I'm 
a hundred percent with Lothier on this one. I mean, you might not actually have to kill your father, but the rest of the country is going to have to think he's dead. Yeah. Can I do an insight check on Hamas? Sure. What do you want to know? Um. Obviously, you can't can't get someone's intentions from a simple insight perception uh, roll. Yeah. I guess I'd like to see how he feels about asking us. Okay. Twenty-eight. Um, from what you can tell, it looks like Hamas is very much uh, backing everything that Morel's saying. Everything about the attack, keeping the casualties low. Uh, this intel seems good, and he does seem to be on board with having you all there as well. What about his sister? Beth Rain? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, she seems extremely a bit stoic, but she definitely seems to support this action. Eleanor looks over to Shionibus. Shionibus is not looking at anyone. She's just looking at the ground. You can tell that she's figuring out things in her brain, but is very uneasy about this topic. Morel, can you can you give some of us some time to think about it? I'll give you the weekend. We have to go back with the other nobles of Acadia. So we have to leave regardless. It would just be easier to plan if we knew what your answer was while we were in Acadia. So, my apologies. I know it's not enough time. But you have the weekend. And don't worry. The intervention will be a, a rousing success. I'm sure my father will learn that his use of drinking is only giving him headaches. For appearance's sake. Thank you. Um, I think we will take our leave now. All right. Uh, with that, the guards open the door. They let you go. You have the rest of the weekend, let's say two days, to figure out how you want to go about it. The plan, if you're curious right now, is up in the air. Uh, put the stakes on the table. If you do wish to join Morel in this, you will be part of the planning process, strategizing the best way to attack this at whatever goals that you understand or desire. Obviously, if you don't want to do this, well, who's to say what three scrappy, powerful people in a small group does against the Imperial Guard? During the the weekend, I I definitely want to find some time to try to talk to Chionibus. I don't plan on it taking an entire weekend. I just needed to get everybody out of that room. Um, Where are we staying, I guess? I mean, if you want a mud hut that has rooms for everyone (laughs) and is completely set. Let's go to the edge of town. Let's build a mud hut and let's talk about this. All right. Uh, sort of like before, except this one isn't going to be permanent. This is just for us to stay in. So it's more of like a four-star hotel type of bedroom. Like, <laughs> it's just, oh. yeah, it's not five, but four. It's it's a nice place to stay for a few days while you have your, your traveling. <laughs> uh, there's uh, a mud, like, soaking bath as well. Oh. With- it is uh, healing. I mean, it, it, it's just normal mud healing, but, you know. It's, Ichi calls dibs. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you have your, uh, your, your mud friend blowing bubbles to make it like a bubble bath? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like a hot tub? Actually, so 
when you say you want bubbles in it, and and if she's gonna blow, he go. Uh, Lothar goes. Dorora can do better than that. Why don't you show them? And she puts her hands into the water, which are mud, into the mud. And as she does, like the mud begins to bubble, like it's a hot spring. Underneath. Uh, it is just the right temperature of warm. It is tingly and sort of magical sensation all up and down your arms and legs, and you can just relax there. Uh, Ichi sinks down to like her nose almost, mm-hmm. and then it comes back up. She's got like a like like half of her face is muddy, like a beard. Well, when oh, you get is... out of the water permanently, it will go away. Oh, I'm still in it though. Like oh, right yeah. here. Oh. <laughs> this this is amazing. Uh yeah, I'm in a much better place to talk about um planning a coup. All right. I, honestly, I don't know who's in this this spa yeah. room with her if it's just Lothier showing uh yeah. her how to use it. Um, Dragon's definitely there. I think we're all meeting around the spa room, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> if, if that's cool with everyone. Yeah. I have to be honest, it's a little weird making this decision right here while I'm in a spa, but it's the best place for me. So if it's not for you, that's all on you. Um, I will say that I trust, I trust what these guys want. She points to Eulothir and, and Dragon. And, and I'm not just saying that because I'm getting a bubble bath. Yeah. Um, Shonabes. You want to tell us what's on your mind? I can't be involved. At all. Well, what do you mean you can't be what? involved? I am the future queen of Nubia. If I am to be involved in a coup in a foreign nation, I could win not only sever my own head from my body, but also start a war with my people when they are already fighting one against freaking demons. I cannot put my people through that. I'm sorry. I know he's our friend. I know he's my friend, but my people will always come first. I've avoided it long enough. And I can't do that anymore. I need to step up and do what I was meant to do. Uh, uh, question for PJ. Uh, who, who, who caused the the burning of the the trees? That was a grand collective of many different people and nations across the world. Okay. Um. However, if you're looking for, I think you're looking for, Mm -hmm. the spearhead of that was the Akkadian Empire. Yeah. And Lothar sort of thinks back on, on the information he has. And he goes, I didn't even think about that. I, I, all the talk about you being a princess, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I I forget sometimes, but I can't not do it, Chionibus. I, I, the pain and suffering, the fact that people in my nation are dying and starving is directly because of how Brack used our land and abused us. I'm not uh, how Acadia abused our land and, and used us. They have been the people causing issues in all nations across the world. And it a lot of it is coming from this man's folly. I don't care that it's it's Morel asking us to do this. If someone asked me to go and stop a terrorist from attacking my nation and, and hurting it more, I would do it. Here's the thing, Chionibus. Who was behind? Who spearheaded? the burning of your ancestors, your people's trees. It was the Akkadians. If you walk away from this, and this man is already going through these bouts of of, of craziness, who knows what he'll do to people in other nations if no one stops him now. 
I, I, I don't think you're giving up on your nation. I think you're giving them a way to not have one more enemy knock down on their doors. I mean, again, I'm with Lothier. You're trading a potential uh, enemy for a potential ally. If if Morel is able to take over, they might be able to help your people. Acadia has one of the largest militaries. And what you're saying is it could go bad for your people, but only if we fail. And I mean, realistically, we just convinced a god, the god of corruption, not to try and destroy the world. You all have strong points, but you have to remember, you are not the face of a nation. Whatever I do reflects on my people. If I can get more than just my country to sign on to something like this, and we can all chip in one or two soldiers to spearhead this mission, that is a different story. But me going in on a stealth mission does not look good. I am not going to blame any of you for taking this on. I would if I could. But I can't. If you would like, I can send word to other nations about the King's episodes and see where that all lies. But until I hear word back, I am staying far away and I do not want to hear any of these meetings, of these plannings. I heard nothing. And I mean nothing. And I do apologize for that because that's not what I want. I get it. I don't. You say I'm That's not the okay. face. We, you're saying we're not the faces of our nation. My nation doesn't even have one single strong government ruler. And a lot of that has to do with how poor our nation is. If we wait, if we wait, I have to sit and continue to watch my country struggle. I... I by the time we send letters out to other nations, it will be too late for the people back home. I, I just don't get it. I don't always either. But some things have to be done. The sign of a good ruler is one who doesn't act on their own. I get it. And you'll make a good ruler. Because I can tell that you want to do this. But making a decision for your entire people is one that you should consider. This could have affect all of their lives. I'm just, I guess, used to us winning. And so I just assume everything's going to be okay. But you're the ruler and you can't just assume that. I'll just have to fight twice as hard. Mm. 
I, mean, I know you guys can win. That's the thing. And I can't wait to hear about these stories of when you come back and tell me all about them. Or I'm sure I'll hear them through the grapevine somehow. She's going to look at Ichi. And I know you can swing that hammer harder than anyone I know. Just make sure oh. you dance on their graves for me. I've never been much of a dancer. But I will do some things the way that you would do it. But I do have to say I... I'm proud of you. It's... I remember when you didn't want any of us to even know you were a princess. And even though your decision makes things harder for us to, you know, go in just because we I'm, having you there would make all the difference sometimes that being strong enough to know what you want, that's, that's not easy. Do you want to get in the bubble bath? Ichi stands up and the mud just kind of just, shh. she has a bathing suit on, of course. Should we all get in the bubble bath? I don't think it's big enough. Oh, I, I, I can fix that. He puts his hand on the ground and it just spreads out a little bit more. I need it. And he just I'll kind of in. jumps in. Helps, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got no still need a drink. Or twelve. Yeah. Where's your wife? I told her I had a meeting. That's a long meeting. Oh no. It, I have a meeting with three women on the outside of town. I'll be right back. I have a meeting um in a hot mud tub with my I didn't know friend. there was gonna be a mud tub, all right. The mud tub has always been a part of this house. <laughs> I meant I didn't know we would be partaking know. in the mud tub. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I'm going to wrap this scene up. Unless anyone has anything else they want to say or do or any other uh, objectives? No? Okay. I want to thank everyone for that amazing role play. I want to give everyone an extra hero point. Uh, so now, time... Time to make some bad decisions. Time has come. Use a hero point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are we going to do? Uh, what are you going to tell Morel before... Uh, he leaves. I mean, Dragon will have definitely talk to him and just like, you know, do the whole soldier wrist grab thing. Yeah. You're like, yeah. look, you've been with us, you know, well, since I, since before I was here, you've got my sword always. And I and know you'd have my back staff. too. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> and my religion check. I don't know. Uh. <laughs> she punches stuff now. That's right. She does. Yeah. She punches stuff. Dragon no. claw. Uh, uh, so while Dragon is is sort of telling him that some of us are going to be there, I'll be like, Chionabis won't be joining us. She said. Um, the nation of Nubia is not involved in this and knows nothing of it. So, right. Yeah, of course. I would not want her to jeopardize her people. If need be, I will send a letter after someone becomes king, and we'll have to have a nice uh, party in the palace. I will miss her, though. All right. So, everyone else, you're on board. Uh, Alona, are you on board? I haven't spoken to you in six months. 
Yep. And I'm sorry this is how I chose to break the no contact um, that we put out there. And this uh. is what you've been doing the entire time? More or less, yeah. And you didn't tell me why? I didn't want to break the no contact until it was necessary. I figured we both needed some space and you know, now it's bigger than both of us. So that's why I'm here now asking for your uh, asking. I can't. Understood. Thank you for your time, Alona. Uh, seriously, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. I'll see you when it's over. Alona's gonna leave. Do nothing, get nothing. Might as well try and fail. But never try at all. Everyone else, are you on board? Because we may have to move quickly if this is to be done. Dragon just kind of like watches Alona leave and looks back at Morel and just I'm in but I'll be back and like darts after Alona and gives just like a knowing like of course I go it, it should be you going to get her but uh your lucky dragon is a good friend um I mean is it <laughs> true uh, yeah, so Dragon and Alona. And I don't know if you've, if Alona has seen Dragon like this towards any of the party, but he's pissed off right now. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell's going on? What are you doing here? What, what do you mean? You like I un I sort of get. Chionibus, but why why won't you help? Is it no good enough of an answer? I mean, I guess we at least got an explanation from Chionibus. That's after everything you all have been through together, I just I guess I just want to know as your friend. a little bit solidarity I don't want Shonibus to be alone it's a little bit frustration for not having known already and it's a little bit I'm tired I've spent the last six months studying everything I could about Ramalgus Day, about this impending doom that's coming. You know that one? The one that Cormat asked us if we knew what we were doing. And yes. obviously we didn't. And all these, everything else just seems petty now. Futile, useless, because it's not going to be here if we don't figure out what's going on. 
And I... don't want to lose the reason why I left in the first place. It wasn't to overthrow governments. And as much as Morel's father can be a horrible person, something feels off and I can't tell you why. But I don't think I can be a part of it, at least not right now. I... You, you left to help people. You know it better than most what his father is capable of and the horrors he's done to people all over the world. Putting someone in power who we know is kind-hearted and will fight for others. That is so important. And look, if you decide not to come, I'll respect your decision, but... And you see him like start to tear up but I don't know if I'll be able to respect you anymore. And he just, like, tears now streaming, turns around and walks back. I don't know what to do with that. I think Ichi observes this, at least him leaving and him coming back. And uh, is everything okay? I, I guess it's not. And Dragon's still crying. He just. I just said something really stupid and it wasn't true. And I'm just angry and upset. And... I just wanted to understand and I didn't. Hmm. There's a lot of pressure around this. It's okay to have intense feelings regarding all of this and how all the decisions everyone's making around it. It doesn't mean you have to change your decision of what you think is right. And it doesn't mean that, you know, someone isn't your friend still because they make a decision that you weren't expecting. I know. I just, I guess I figure one less tyrant in the world is a good thing. Well, I'm going to help you out. Lothier is never going to give up on this. And, and, You've gotten strong, both of you. And he, but we were strong because we had each other. And now I was, before I was always sure we were going to win because we were together and now Or not. How, 
how how do we how do we move forward with so much doubt? We find a way. Maybe we do things a little different than what we're used to. Maybe we take a little bit of time and get a better idea of what we're getting into. Maybe, maybe Morel can give us a bit of a, a runway on reconnaissance. We get an idea of what's happening. We get backup. I don't really know, but there's lots of solutions to a problem. But, and Dragon just kind of instinctively looks back to town. He's just, I have even more to lose now than I did before. And if we're not at our full strength, it puts you, it puts me, it puts Lothier, it puts Morel, it puts the people we care about at risk. And it puts the other people that I care about at risk. It's hard. It's hard to count on people. And it's even harder to lose the people that you knew you could count on. And with that, Dragon just goes and sits down in a, in a corner with his head in his hands. Okay. Well, I want to make two things, well, certainly three things. Uh, at this point, I want to say three things. One is I know you all got amazing hero points for all this role play and I want to uh, check in afterwards, but everyone's going to get more hero points. Awesome. I love it. Everyone's going to be starting Better off Better let us keep some of those for uh, next absolutely. time. I mean, yeah. I'm making it out right now that everyone is starting with three hero points next session. Uh, and two is we, we need to end. But before we do, number three is I'd like to end you with a premonition, a foreshadowing, maybe even a glimpse of next episode, next week. Hearts pounding in your chest. The ring of steel rattling in your ears. Your feet are numb from pounding on unforgiving sandstone and gold. As you break through the door, a pile of bodies behind you, you come into the throne room in the middle of the night, meant to be empty. But in this throne room, you see a golden throne chair. A small window adjacent on the wall, moonbeam coming through, giving light to... King Nimrod the Fourteenth in his chair. Two massive swords in his hands like canes stuck into the ground. Weary-eyed, bags under his eyes, hasn't slept in probably days. He stares at you like he's been waiting for you. He addresses you by name, and he addresses Morel by his, and as he does so, you see moving from behind his throne ten long white fingers wrapping around his shoulders and slowly emerging a full moon with a smile that cracks from ear to ear. And a little laugh as a long purple tongue dances and writhes in the moonlight sky. But more on that next week. As of right now, this is the end of season one, episode... Well, sorry, ep season three, episode one. Let us say our goodnights and goodbyes... Starting with... 
seriously. Who's not like writing uh, curiously? Uh, Randy, Randy, please yeah. tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Hey everyone, I'm Randy Alvarenga. You can find me on uh, Twitter at Rola Raja. Uh, I put my stuff there. Uh, wasn't expecting episode one to come out of the gate like this, but love it. Uh, love these amazing people. So uh, yeah, happy to be here. Awesome. I love the chat. Moon's Haunted. Uh, next up, <laughs> we have Kylie. Kylie, please tell us who you are. Where? Uh, skip me. Skip me. Skip you. Skip me. Skip you. Okay, take skip it. Skip me. <laughs> Sydney, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Oh my god, hello. My name is Sydney Rubino. You can find me all over the internet at Sydney Rubino. That's Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I can't believe the moon is involved. Um, uh, I can't believe I do the a moon. Lot of- <laughs> A lot of things stuck. And you're right, Taryn Wanderer. No one ever suspects, suspects the Lunar Inquisition. <laughs> um, uh, just, just, lines. Follow, just, just follow me on the social medias and I'll post what I'm doing cool stuff. Oh, 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 I believe on June 11th I'm doing a charity stream for um, Rainbow Railroad. So follow me on Twitter for more details on that and support you. Happy Pride Month, everybody. We are gay, we are queer, and we are here. What time is that chair? I think it's at 3 o'clock. You will find out. Yes, we will. On Perception Studios, but nothing's been announced yet. Okay. We'll find some familiar faces. Next up, let's go over to Sam. Sam, who are you and where can we find you on that sweet, sweet internet? Hello, I'm Sam. You can find me all over the internet at Hey Sam Sterling as I recover emotionally from the schism which has torn my friends apart asunder in two. Um, yes, I will be recovering over the next week. Um, and what do I have going on? Uh, this show. Also, uh, you're, you're me and your PJ. Uh, have been nominated for the Crit Awards. Wow! Uh, so you go to Twitter, Crit underscore awards on Twitter. Um, PJ's nominated for best, I think, EGM for Pat Paizo. Yeah, best, best Pathfinder to EGM, yeah. Uh huh. And I'm a, a nominated for something. And you can go on there and you can vote. And there's also other really great people on there too. And you should check them out and check out all their stuff because we got a lot of friends that are nominated and they're all really great people. So go check that out. Sam is nominated for best Pathfinder slash Paizo player. Yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> well, next up, let's go over to. Did I say Wes? No? Good, because I've lost my mind at this point. Wes! Uh, please tell us where you want where we can find you. That's sweet, sweet internet. Uh, absolutely. First off, I'm starting off episode one with the pageant, and then all the serious stuff happened. But hi, guys. I'm Wes at Wes underscore IRL and all of the things. Uh, you can find me doing some stuff online every once in a while. Mostly, you can find me here uh, on Nat20 Productions official Wednesdays. <laughs> All right, Kylie, how are you feeling? You ready? Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Kylie frantically writing notes is my favorite, Kylie. Yes. And they're very much scribbles. So who <laughs> knows if I can read them next week. But it's fine. That's a problem for future Kylie. Um, hi, I'm Kylie, or I go by Kai. It really doesn't matter at this point. You can find me at Kai is a wonderful life all over the internet. Instagram, Twitter. All that good stuff. Uh, when I am not here with this amazing cast, I am over on the Initiative Order on every other Tuesday playing a Dresden Palatine TRPG called Just In Time. Great time. You missed last week's episode. Don't worry, it's up on our YouTube. You're going to catch up just fine. It's only six episodes in. So it's like not that bad. Uh, currently, we're being hunted by the Wild Hunt. I'm scared. <laughs> um, I have some other things coming up that I'm not able to talk about just yet. Uh, so keep an eye on my socials and that'll be announced when I'm able to talk about them. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I'm so sorry that 
like we're on the brink of crying for this episode, guys. That's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's your good. It's your very good. Uh, well, that just leaves me. My name is PJ McGaw. You can find me all over the internet at PJ.McGaw. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter. You can find me, find me. Let's have fun. When I'm not here with these amazing legends, you can find me doing other projects when I can actually talk about them. Uh, also, like... Kylie, uh, can't really talk about them yet, but you will recognize a few familiar faces in some of these projects, um, as well as the things that I am doing with uh, Eldritch Osiris Games. More on those things as we can talk about them. Work my butt off on a few stuff. But that is it for now. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in to episode one of season three. Thank you to all my amazing players for being awesome and vulnerable and so cool. Without further ado, it's raiding time. We're going to raid the Hero Zone because I can. <laughs> That's a good reason. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Panku Chan. Thank you. All right. Here we go. All right. We are going to be raiding. Uh, remember uh, to see us next week. Stay legendary. And we love you. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Raiding in three. Two, one. Oh, All Night Society on, on Spotify, uh, Queen's Word Games. Thank you, Taryn, I totally forgot. And bye.